Hello everyone, welcome to today's session on Google Colab. First, let's try to understand what Google Colab is. So Google Colab allows you to write and execute Python code in your browser itself. You don't need to install Python or any other ID in your laptop. The only thing you need is a Gmail account and a Google Colab extension enabled in your Google Chrome browser. To understand how to enable this extension, please go through the three ways to install Python videos. So in Google Colab, you don't need to configure anything. Google Colab also provide you free access to GPUs and it is very easy to share your Google Colab work with your friends and colleagues. Now let's try to get familiar with the Google Colab environment. So at the top, you can see the name of your Google Colab notebook followed by some standard menu items. On the left hand side, you have some icons for table of contents. So it is going to show me the different section present in my Google Colab notebook. This is followed by the code snippet section. So Google Colab team already created some useful code snippets for us. We simply copy paste and use them in our notebooks. So let's say I want to explore different form fields that I can add in my Google Colab notebook. So what I can do is I can visit this notebook which is already created by Google Colab team. I can simply copy paste these widgets and use them in my notebook. You can see this slider value, it's, it's updating dynamically and it's very useful and the GUI is looking good. The next section that I have is the file, right? So if I want to upload some files or if I want to refresh my folder or if I want to mount my drive to Google Colab, this is a section where we can do all this stuff. Alright, so what we are going to learn in today's session, we are going to start with Markdown. Very quickly, I'm going to cover the Markdown because I already created a separate video on Markdown. So I'm not going to cover Markdown in detail. Then how you can set up your drive, how to mount your drive when reading datasets, how to get a free GPU, how we can access our GitHub code directly from Google Colab, and how we can share our code with our friends and colleagues. Let's try to understand Markdown. So, in Google Colab, we have two types of cells. One is text cell and the other one is code cell. You can add them by simply clicking on this code cell and text cell, right? So, a text cell is added here. I can simply delete it for now. And this is a code cell which I can again delete it, right? So, Markdown is nothing but it's a HTML type language which makes your code more you know, easy to read and more beautiful and attractive for your users, right? So if I give a hash symbol, it will convert whatever written here into a heading, right? In Google Colab, one good thing is it show you the changes in real time on the right hand side, right? So if I delete one hash symbol from this, you can see the size of heading is increasing. So if I add one more hash here, the size of heading will decrease. So you can see the changes in real time, so you can adjust accordingly, right? Next, if you want to give uh, headings, you can use these hash symbols. If you want to give smaller headings, let's say up to H5, you can use five hash symbols. To make your text bold, you have to use two asterisks. To make your text italic, you have to use single asterisks. For the strike through, you can use the two tilde symbols. So whatever text you want to strike through, you can surround them with the tilde symbol. In fact, two tilde symbols. To make your block indented, you have to use the greater than symbol. So here you can see I have used this greater than symbol and our the text is coming as intended, right? To give links in Google Colab, first you have to you know write your text within this square bracket. So I want to give link to this links text and I have written links in my square brackets. This square brackets will be followed by the normal parenthesis. Inside normal parenthesis, I'm going to give the actual web address for the page where I want to visit after clicking on this particular text. So if I click on this, it is going to take me to this Google Colab research page. Right? So this is how I can give link in my Google Colab Markdown. We can also give mathematical symbols in our Google Colab Notebook. The only thing you have to do is you have to surround your equation with the dollar symbol. Right? So if I surround this equation y equals to 0.x with dollar symbols, you can see now it is coming in equation format. In the same way, you can insert some mathematical equations and mathematical symbols in Google Colab Notebook by surrounding them with the dollar symbol. 
To give horizontal lines, you can either use three asterisks or three underscores. This is how your horizontal will look like. To execute this cell block, I can simply press Shift plus Enter on my keyboard, and this is how my knock my mockdown looks like. Second, how we can set up our Google Drive for Google Collab. So I'll go to my Gmail account. I will go to this Google App section. Now we'll click on this Google Drive folder. Once I'm in my drive, now for Google Collab work, I will suggest it's always good to create a specific folder and work in that folder. So I'm creating 2020 folder in my drive and then I've created a subfolder which is YouTube and here I'm going to do all my Google Collab work. If I want to open any notebook, I can simply right click on that notebook and click on open with Google Collab. If I want to create a new Google Collab notebook, I can right click anywhere in this area and I can go to more and look for Google Collab option. Right? So this is how you can set up your drive for Google Collab. Next, how you can mount your drive and reading data set which is present in your particular folder on your drive, right? So there are two ways. First, I will show you the simple way on going to this files. Click on this mount drive icon here. As you can see, it is asking you that permit this notebook to access your Google Drive files. I will say connect to Google Drive and now my drive is mounted. The second way is by using the importing this drive module. So from google.collab import drive. So you don't have to worry about this. We will see in our introduction to Python session how to import different modules and packages in your Python notebooks, right? So right now I'm importing this sub module which is drive and I'm using a mount method to mount my drive by using or passing this string to the mount method. Once I execute this block, I can click on this run symbol and it will say that drive is already mounted uh, because I already used this, uh, you know, the simple way of clicking on icon, right? Now, once my drive is mounted, I want to use pandas to read a CSV file which is present on my drive, right? So this particular section or this particular string up to my drive will be common for each and every one of us. What follows after my drive is your folder structure. So as I said, while setting up my drive, I have given 2020 folder. Inside that, I have a TensorFlow folder in which I have this diabetes data set, right? So if I go to my Google Drive in 2020 folder in TensorFlow, you can see I have diabetes.csv file present, right? So I want to read this file. I will execute this block. I'm using a head method to read the top five rows of my diabetes data frame object. Now it's showing me the top five rows. Also, if I want to see the content of my particular folder on my drive, I can use a exclamatory symbol and the ls command. If I execute this, it is going to show me all the files present in my YouTube folder. As of now, I have only two notebooks which are marked down and using Google Collab and they both are visible by using this ls command. Next topic is how you can get a free GPU in your Google Collab notebook. So for getting a free GPU, you have to go to runtime and you have to click on the change runtime type. As of now, I don't have anything selected in this, but if you click on this drop down, you can select a GPU or a TPU as per your requirement. There is also a small question mark symbol here for more information. If you click on this, it is going to take you to the Google Collab research page where they are showing you what type of GPUs are available and you can also opt for Collab Pro version. So if you have very heavy usage, if you are doing image classification, video analysis or voice, voice analysis, you will need more GPU power. So you can always opt for Collab Pro plans, right? So I'm not selecting GPU as of now, but if you want, you can select any of this and click on save and you will have GPU power available to you. Next topic is how you can access your GitHub code from Google Collab environment, right? So first I, you have, you should have a GitHub account. So this is my GitHub account. And let's say I want to have my Titanic survivor prediction uh, notebook in my Google Collab environment, right? So I will simply copy paste this address from here i will go back to my google collab environment i will click on file 
and then click on upload notebook now in this upload notebook pop-up I will get a github section and I can simply copy paste my URL here right as soon as I copy paste it is going to get my code and if I want this notebook I can simply click on it and now it's gonna open the notebook that I have in my github environment right so this is the notebook that I created some time back and now it's visible to me and I can play around with this in Google collab environment right so let's go back to my previous notebook so this is how you can access your github code now the last thing that I want to show you today is how you can share your code with your friends and colleagues so you can click on this share symbol here and you can simply mention the email ID so let's say I want to share this notebook with my friend DS using Python right so I'll select his email ID you can also control that whether he's going to be an editor or a commenter or a viewer and I will simply click on send button right and now this notebook is shared with my friends so they can comment over my work they can you know simply use it or maybe pick up from where I left off alright guys that's all for today please subscribe for more videos in case of any question feel free to use comment section happy learning stay safe